All right, guys, welcome back to our Extreme Airsoft six year birthday bash series. I'm sitting here with the relentless one, Adela Relentless. And she has flown all the way from California to be a part of this celebration. And I gotta ask, how was the flight? How was getting here? And uh, what do you think of Rhode Island so far? Um, the flight was definitely long. Uh, getting here was definitely an adventure. And Rhode Island's actually very nice. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice little state to, it's definitely got a lot more to offer than you would think. So that's, that's pretty cool. I gotta ask, are you one of those people that when they said, all right, well, we're gonna have you go out to, you're gonna have you come out to Rhode Island, you were like, so that's like next to New York, right? Is that, is that kind of like the feeling you got on that one? No, actually, I was really excited to find out that I was gonna be coming here. So it was one of those things where I looked at it and was like, okay, that's new. <laughs> but it, it, I was looking forward to it. Now, I mean, as, as you guys can probably see by, uh, she's all geared out. She's got the gun, she just barely even down it, disconnected everything, she just got off the field. Now, how does, how's, uh, um, how's the experience that you've had at this CQB field stack up uh, to the ones that you've been to? Because I know probably in California, you get to be a little bit of a CQB connoisseur of sorts. So, I mean, I gotta ask, uh, brutal honestly, how does this stack up to uh, the California CQB airsoft scene? Well, I mean, it's definitely different. I mean, I'll be honest though, I don't really play too much CQB, but I mean, from the few experiences that I have had with it, this does seem a little bit more fast paced than what I'm used to, honestly. And the crazy thing about it is, I think the only part of the field that I've had the major problem with getting around is like that warehouse section, I believe is what they call it. And it, th there's this chokehold that happens. Like if you're starting from that end, the other team just kind of outruns you and then you wind up getting stuck in this one area and it's a little bit difficult to get out of the spawn. But I mean, other than that one area, the field is designed amazingly. I mean, all the little things that you guys have put in there like that, like the cars coming through walls and I mean, all of like the neon light. I mean, and it's really dark in this field too. So I mean, for you guys that are like, oh yeah, I play CQB and I use a flashlight, it's like, you really need one for this field. I mean, playing without that flashlight is almost impossible in this field. And I think that's really cool because it gives it a different like aspect. I mean, it's something that, I mean, if you aren't running a flashlight, you kind of have to think about things a little more than you're used to. So it definitely gives a different aspect of gameplay, which is really, really nice, that kind of experience. Well, I mean, that, that's kind of actually what we were going for a little bit. We were going for more of that um, use the darkness to your advantage. Because when, you when you have close quarters, I mean, these, the mill buildings here in the Northeast are a lot older than the warehouses in the newer parts of the country. So you don't, I mean, the, the, the square footage, is a, it's a lot tighter. So with all lights on, being able, to, being able to sprint a six foot gap without being noticed and shot at, it's a lot harder. And you kill the lights, increases your chances of getting across that gap tenfold. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was a lot of work in that. I mean, that's, that's the one thing we always needed to work on is that warehouse, but unfortunately it's structural wall, so if we blow out any more of that wall, it's coming down. But I mean, they are, they do have plans in the future to, to fix that issue. Um, now, in the airsoft community, I always, I always like to ask the West Coast guys, when you, when you see the community like what has congregated here, I mean, you're seeing representatives, not only from Rhode Island, because it's such a small state, uh, you've got people coming in from uh, from New Hampshire, Maine, Vermont. We've got Connecticut people here in force. We've got a lot of Massachusetts individuals as well as a lot of residential uh, Rhode Islanders. So you're getting a full region. Um, I mean, how, how do have you? Uh, what's kind of like your outside observation on the on the community here, which is actually still fairly young community because I mean, it, airsoft is kind of like stretching its way across the country and it's kind of really now fully gaining a foothold up here in the Northeast. And I just want kind of like your observations and like what you think about the community and the people in it that you're seeing and how it kind of, how it differentiates from what you see on your side of the country. Well, I mean, honestly, to me, airsoft, like the airsoft community in general is amazing. I mean, there's a lot of support that kind of comes from everybody and companies themselves, like you'll see them out here supporting events. And I mean, whether they're big or small, like there's always some sort of support to them, which is 
which is really nice. And I mean, considering the airsoft industry and all of its struggles and things that it kind of has to go through sometimes, like, I mean, to have support for an individual, for players, for new players, it's always nice to see. And I definitely encourage something like that. I mean, coming out to Rhode Island, I've met some of the friendliest people here. I mean, just random people that, awkwardly enough, aren't even really part of this event. Like, they're either just like picking somebody up, dropping somebody off, like, they'll stop and chat with you. And I mean, it's, it's such a nice experience to see. And just like the friendly attitudes, the positive demeanors. I mean, it's always nice to see good players, especially when you're playing on the field, like calling their hits and, I mean, kind of experiencing that good gameplay that all of us are really looking for at the end of the day. So it's it's been a wonderful experience, honestly. And that's actually very great to hear. Now, um, now you are here representing uh, Tipman Arms as well as yourself. So uh, I know so you're, uh, we got to interview Sean uh, yesterday, last night. Now, I mean, we got to talk about the guns, but I'm actually pretty curious because I haven't I haven't really got my hands on one to play except for one short occasion. A uh, buddy of mine let me use it for about two minutes and I didn't get the full experience. Uh, how do you like this thing? Because this is this is a gun that we were talking about. Uh, that That's kind of, in my opinion, it's like, it's like you got your electro pneumatics, like your, your SMPs and everything. It's, it's let's take the best aspects of that and basically birth them with the best aspects of a gas blowback rifle. Now, I, I just got, I got to know just like, how, how does it run? How does it shoot? So this specific gun actually isn't even out on the market yet. This is a brand new gun from Tipman that we actually somewhat kind of teased here at this event. Um, this is the Tipman M4X1. And basically there's only going to be 300 of these made. I am not exactly 100% sure on its release date yet, but I've kind of gotten to test it out so far, see how it runs. Um, the really awesome thing about this gun is that it actually has all of the external upgrades and it comes with like a genuine Magpul stock, like an, a Magpul foregrip. The actual like rail is designed by Tipman itself. You got to, like the Tipman iron sights here. So it, this gun actually has a lot of really cool features to it. Um, from what I remember, I believe there's only gonna be 300 of them made. They also come with like a hard case. I'm not 100% sure on the price point yet, but I mean, like I said, this gun is really amazing. I mean, internally it runs like a beast. I mean. So far I've ran it with HPA and I've had so much fun with it. Like out of the box, it's super accurate, just a straight shooter. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really can't figure out anything to complain about with this gun. And it looks, it looks like a beast. Now I do have to say, have you gotten to try it with the uh, CO2 magazines? Yes, actually, believe it or not, um, my first event ever playing with the Tipman M4 was Broken Home and I actually busted my tank, so I had to convert the gun on the spot to CO2. And that was the very first time I ever ran with it. It was so amazing. And the CO2 definitely has a lot harder of a kick than the HPA does, so I was a little nervous like running that gun for the first time, but it, it, was, it was awesome. I mean, it performed really well, it shot the way I needed to shoot, and I mean, it really only has good things to say about it. The product definitely sells itself. I definitely, I definitely got to get my hands on and try, so I might be trying to steal that from you. Now, I do have one suggestion. You did talk about your tank broke. Have you thought about just grabbing, because you got that extra kick from the CO2, you thought about grabbing like a 20 ounce paintball tank and running it in spot of your HPA and seeing how that's going to run for you? That way you could still run your AEG mags and, uh, and just blast that thing. Um, I've thought about it, but to be honest, like, I'm so particular about this gun, and truthfully, I'm still learning about it, so I'm, like, so scared to kind of, like, really push this thing, but I know the gun can handle it, because I've seen it done on, like, other people's videos, and I'm always, like, watching them, and I'm like, I want to try that, but then I, like, get really nervous, like, messing with it, because, like I said, I'm still learning about it, but I definitely, that is something I have thought about trying, so, I mean, when it does, obviously, I'll probably come out with a video for it and let you guys know how it handled. I mean, the biggest one right now is I'm trying to build a DMR setup with the Tipman gun, because I know that's kind of something people want to see, so I'm definitely working on that for everybody. Awesome. So I guess you can look forward to seeing those videos. And uh, thank you very much for coming out all the way from California to be with us. And, uh, you know, how, uh, this event is going so well. You think you're going to be uh, coming over here next year, possibly? Any chance I get, I definitely will. <laughs> all right. Well, you heard it from the Relentless One. And this is a hammer, and we're signing off. And we'll see you guys later.